Journey IFC strives to create safe spaces to worship God. Know that you are welcome just as you are, regardless of religious background or lack thereof, skin color, political affiliation, sexuality, age, culture, or any other label you own or society throws on you. You are welcomed and celebrated here just as you are. So today's clearly a weird day. If you are here, there's a lot of tables, a lot of color. We're telling people online, if you have colors, paper, you'll need that for all the things we're doing. Um, we're gonna get creative today, which some people might go, I don't like that. Um, but the reason we're doing this is because last week I had my counseling session and I was talking about, I don't know, I just take myself too seriously. I just want more fun. And so with the help of my wife, Skylar, we came up with this idea of talking talking about the story through watercolors. So we're gonna do that today, uh, it's gonna be fun. And so if you have that feeling of, oh, I'm not artsy, I'm not good at this, which I know some of us will probably have that feeling. Let's just think about when we were like kids and we were going to art class and it wasn't about getting it right or perfect, it was just about like putting paint on a page and having fun. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put paint on a page and have fun. If you have colors, anything at home, that'll work, um, but yeah. That's, that's the point of this. We're going to just not take ourselves so seriously today. We're going to have fun. It should be playful. And then we're going to get to share that with one another. And it's okay if it's imperfect. It's on our sign. Like I always say, we're supposed to be imperfect. Um, what we're doing is we're starting a new worship series. Today's the first day of that. So we're coming in with a bang and all these tables and stuff. Um, and we're going to be talking about rain and drought. Um, in a series we're calling Rain or Shine. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through all the different scriptures about rain and drought and how those play with each other. I wonder why we would talk about a drought, right? <laughs> does, does that feel relatable at all? I don't know. Um, but just looking at all the stuff going on in the world, um, all of the, the lack of rain, how hot it is, we're gonna talk about uh, different times throughout scripture where people dealt with very similar circumstances. Uh, but we do know that right now there's wildfires going on, but we also have flooding in Kentucky, so we need to hold those people in prayer. Um, so when we pray for rain, we pray for a reasonable amount of rain, not a rain that can destroy. Um, and so today we're going to do that. We're going to not get into our heads too much. We're just going to get into our bodies and explore. Um, you'll have some stuff. You have supplies. So you'll see you have one piece of paper. On the back is a bunch of words. You'll just keep it on the blank side right now. We're going to do a breath activity with that. And that's what the pin's for. And then you should have three little sheets of watercolor paper. Um, and in that, you'll be walked through how we're going to do that. We're going to paint on those. Um, you should also have paint and a water cup, a paintbrush. If you need any supplies or if you need another paper towel or anything like that, um, one of us can run around and get it for you. Um, again, it's not going to be perfect. We can stop. We can interrupt. That is OK. Um, but before we get too far, let's all just take one deep breath in. So breathe in. And out. Let us open with some prayer. God of love, I pray that today you remind us that we don't have to be so serious, that faith and religion and church and community can be fun, and that we can be creative and that we can just let loose. God, I pray that this time together can help us get into this story and see how you spoke to your people, how you worked through your people in scripture, and how you'll continue to work in our lives today, right now, in this drought, that you'll show up, God. God, help us be present and help us to, to just breathe and to live into this moment so that it can nurture our souls and so that we can go out in the world ready to love and serve and have fun out there too. This is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hi everyone. Hi. I'm Sarah. I'm gonna sit so I can do this as well. Join me on this table. Okay. So we're gonna draw our breath today. So it's going to be a little funky, and that's going to be that's the whole point to be funky. So um, first, you're going to take your pen in your writing hand, and we're going to use this blank paper in front of us. Make sure the paper is flat on the table. Sorry. 
Yeah, so one that has words in the back, we'll see the words. As you're getting ready, find a comfortable place to sit. Okay. So, we're going to take our pen and we're going to place it anywhere on the page. And on your next inhale, you're going to start to draw a straight line across the page. Across. And as you exhale, you're going to shift the direction of the line and move the line across the page. Following your breath, never picking up the pen, we're exploring our breath across the page. Continue to take full deep breaths at your own pace, seeing the way your breath takes up space. We're going to take one more full deep breath in, and on your last exhale, try to connect the line to wherever the line started on the page, creating an infinite loop of breath. Amen. Thank you, Skylar. That was fun. We're getting creative, right? Yeah. So thank you. That was Skylar. She found that for us. Um, so now we're going to get into the creative part, then to the story. Um, for this, we're going to need some volunteers. We didn't pre-assign this. Um, so we'll need two readers, but I'll get to that in a second. So just know that that is coming if you're feeling so called to read. Because today our reading is coming from the book of Numbers, chapter 20. So in this story, the Israelites have been freed from the bonds of slavery. They were under the Egyptians, and then Moses and his siblings Miriam and Aaron have come and brought them out of slavery. Um, and so this is where they are. They're in the wilderness wandering, trying to find this land that was promised to them, that they think is going to be better, it's going to be this great place. Um, but, as the story goes today, Miriam has just died, and it seems that for some reason when Miriam dies, they lose access to their water source. And so, can you imagine being in the wilderness, in the desert, if it's as hot as it is out right now, um, and having no water. And so all the people um, start getting angry, of course, because they're thirsty. Um, it makes sense, they're hot, they're tired, they're wandering in the wilderness, and they are just upset and they're upset at Moses for bringing them out into the wilderness and, and a lot of them are like we'd just rather die than have to put up with this. And so for our reading today what we're going to do is we're going to read through the story twice in kind of a creative way. So the first time we're not all going to read along so you'll see on the back of the your breath that you have the reading there. Um, so we aren't going to look at it all together the first time. The first time we're just going to sit and listen. Um, so is there anyone who's willing to to read for us? Okay, Joe, yeah, perfect. Well, the whole thing. Yeah, so just read this scripture and read it to the next one here. So everyone just sit and listen. Numbers 20, 2 through 11. There was no water for their, there for their community, so they ganged up on Moses and Aaron. They attacked Moses. We wish we died when the rest of our brothers died before God. Why did you haul this congregation of God out here into the wilderness to die? People and cattle alike. And why did you take us out of Egypt in the first place, dragging us into the miserable country? No grain, no figs, no grapevines, no pomegranates, and now not even any water. Moses and Aaron walked from the assembled congregation 
to the tent of meeting and threw themselves face down on the ground and they saw the glory of God. God spoke to Moses, take the staff, assemble the community, you and your brother Aaron, speak to that rock that's right in front of them and it will give you water. You will bring water out of the rock for them, congregation and cattle will both drink. Moses took the staff away from God's presence as commanded, he and Aaron rounded up the whole congregation in front of the rock. Moses spoke, listen rebels, do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? With that, Moses raised his arm and slammed his staff against the rock. Once, twice, water poured out, congregation and cattle drank. So now that we know this story, we're all familiar, we got it, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that page over. So now you can look at it and we're gonna read along. And this time I invite you to, to circle, underline any words that just connect to you. Something, maybe it's a word you're like, I don't really like that word, or this one makes me feel weird. Or maybe you're like, oh, I really like this word. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this one. All right, I've said this before, whatever word sparkles at you, just, just circle that one, and then we'll take a moment a bit to, to look at these words. Um, so yeah, read over, uh, we'll read through this another time. Does anyone want to read aloud for us another time? There was no water for the community, so they ganged up on Moses and Aaron. They attacked Moses. We wish we'd died when the rest of our brothers died before, died before God. Why did you call this congregation of God out here into the wilderness to die? People and cattle alike. And why did you take us out of Egypt in the first place, dragging us into this miserable country? No rain, no great signs, no pomegranates, and now not even any water. Moses and Aaron walked from the assembled congregation to the tent of meeting and threw themselves face down on the ground. And then they saw the glory of God, uh, the glory of God. God spoke to Moses, take this staff, assemble the community, you and your brother Aaron, speak to that rock that's, that's right in front of them and it will give water. You will bring the, the water out of the rock the congregation you can will both drink. Moses took the staff away from God's presence as commanded. He and Aaron rounded up the whole congregation in front of the rock. Moses spoke, Listen, rebels, do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? That Moses raised his arm and slammed the staff against the rock. Once, twice, water poured out congregation and cattle drank. What we're going to do now is I want you to take the words, whatever you underlined in the story, whatever called out to you, whatever words spoke to you, and I want you to start narrowing down the list until you have one word or one phrase um, that you want to focus on today. So that, that'll that be your focus. So just take a couple of moments um, and, and just think what of these words calls my attention and feels the closest to my heart. So we'll take a couple seconds and then I'll tell you what you have to so once you narrow down your word or phrase, what I'm going to do is take one of these watercolor papers. There's, there should be three in front of you. Um, so take one of those. And anywhere on that page, write down your word or phrase. So whatever word you what spoke to you. If you have multiple, that's OK. You can write as many that feels comfortable to you. Um, doesn't matter where you put on the page, just write it. And, and then I'll tell you what you have that. So what we're going to do is now that you have this word in your paper, this is gonna become your focus word, your focus statement um, that you're gonna sit with today. Um, this is exciting, I'm glad y'all are just living into this. This is a journey, thank you all. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna just play with the colors in front of you. Um, you have watercolors, you have water, so you'll just dip your paintbrush in, there's even a paintbrush in the paint. So you'll dip your paintbrush in the water, put it in the colors. We should have enough to share. If we need more, um, we have some extras that we can pass around. Um, so what you'll do is you'll just color around that word or on the word and choose colors that you think speak to that word. Or maybe you want to draw an image that relates to that word. 
or if you're like me, just make it abstract. But we're gonna listen to some music and we're just gonna sit um, and we're gonna focus on this word. So I encourage you, as you're focusing on this, think about what this word means to you. Why did it speak to you? What drew you to that? Um, and then we'll just sit with that for a bit, so. So now that we've sat with that word, we're gonna go on to our next sheet of paper. So you can grab your second little square. This one just set it to the side. And we'll grab your next sheet of paper. <laughs> yeah, it's not enough time for all your artsy people. So if you need to come back to that, that is also okay. If you wanna sit with this one while we're doing the second one, that's okay too. This is just to get into the story. So whatever is helping you get in the story and, and to think about what the, your word was, that's okay. So now we're gonna go to the second sheet. So what we're gonna do is, I want you to take this sheet and just fold it in half. I know it's small. You can fold it whichever halfway sounds good to you, just to make a crease so that you know there's two sides of it. And then you can unfold it and you'll just see that there's a crease down the middle. And that's just to help because we're gonna do two different things with this one sheet. So you're just gonna focus on one side of this page right now. So one side of that crease. So in this series, we're talking about drought. Um, a lot of times in scripture, drought is uh, a physical sign of a lot of inward struggle that's going on. Um, and if you've been outside recently, you get that it's a struggle, it's hot, it's miserable, um, and they don't have any water, and they're just, they're literally dying of thirst, and they're, they're angry with Moses, and they're like, just give us some water, and even Moses and Aaron have to fall face down on the ground before God, just saying, please help us. We have no idea what to do. And so what you're gonna do is on this first half, I invite you to paint what drought feels like. You don't have to just do drought colors, but in your life, and I mean this not just in the physical, what does it feel like to go outside and sweat all the time? I mean, what does it feel like to want something that you don't have and to feel like, I don't know when I'm gonna get it. So take some time and focus on one half of that and you're gonna just focus on drought and what that feeling is like in the story or in your life. And then we'll come back in a second, I'll tell you what to do after that. <laughs> so I told you to, to crease this page, and so what I want you to do is on the other half of this page, um, I want you to imagine what the feeling was like whenever they finally got water, whenever Moses and Aaron went to God, threw themselves down on the ground, prayed out, went back, called everyone a bunch of rebels for wanting water, and then he, Moses struck a rock when he actually got water. Um, I want you to think, what does that feel like? What, what is that feeling of getting something after a long time without getting it? And I want you to take the other half of that sheet in, in connection, so just right next to that drawing, I want you to talk about what is it like. Imagine if it just started raining when we walked outside right now in this 100 degree weather, what would that feel like? <laughs> Put that on a piece of paper, and, and let's just think about what is that feeling of oh. God's provision of this story. So, in true journey fashion, we like to talk and share about these experiences with one another. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up the floor. Um, if there was anything that spoke to you on this, uh, if you just want to share your art, if you want to show, if you don't want to share your art, I'll talk about it, that's okay as well. Um, 
but this could be what word did you choose or what colors did you choose? How did it feel? Did it help you get to the story or did it make you feel distant from the story? Was this fun? Was this intimidating? Um, what about this spoke to your heart or to this story? Um, yeah, so if there's anything, we'll pass around the mic so the Zoomers can hear you. Um, yeah. Anyone want to start us off? What's the third paper? Yeah, the third paper will be next. Yeah. You'll see, you'll see. Anticipation. Step out of my comfort zone. All right. <laughs> but I have to say, this spoke to me in a way. I'm surprised. And you don't know me, and I'm never going to say my name if you see me on the street. Avert your eyes. <laughs> what spoke to me in the reading was the word community and congregation. I would say to you, I'm a woman of a certain age, and I made my faith, faith real complicated when I was younger. It was all intellectual, it was all head trippy. Read a great book, said Missing Heaven by 18 Inches, which is the space from your head to your heart. And I kind of lived that in my younger day. And so when I went over this reading work, came to me was community, and this is very simplistic. I know there are people that are doing works of art. This is just real simple, but that's kind of where I am in my faith journey. But community is where I experience God. I don't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. I have to be in community, whatever that means. And for me, it's very specific. It's family and it's community like this. That's how I know God. When I look out, I don't always see God in me, but when I look out, I see God in you, and you help me that here actually. So in that frame of community <coughs> is love. That's what I want my God to be now. My God's been every person in the world, and where God is for me now is love. And how do I remove the barriers so that I can love more fully? and experience God in myself. Yes. You know? Yeah. I am a lover of the poet Rumi. If you're around me, oh, yeah. you're the Rumi quotes all the time. That's what drew us together was Rumi. And there's a wonderful one that I will not do well, but I offer it. Love, lovers do not find each other along the way. They are in each other. Always. And to me, we are lovers of God, and God loves us. Amen. We're never separate. So in that, I have a respect and admiration and a hope for the cross that we experience joy and suffering in lives, in community. And we bring it all to the cross because that's what we were shown through the model of Jesus. So that was, and then when you go into drought, if this is not simple, I don't know. <laughs> That's beautiful. I can draw a circle, kind of. <laughs> when I go into the drought, I'm old enough to know that I'm experiencing it, and I have a caution light for that. These are signs for me. And I know enough about myself to know I'm entering the desert. I, I know that. I don't give up responsibility on that. And I often feel in that blue place, that sad place, that feeling of despair. And, you know, we've all been there. It's dark night of the soul. Many have gone before us and taught us about it. When I spend time in discernment, I get a green light. If I do my hard work in contemplation and solitude, and it brings me back to where I started, which is love and the heart. Yes. And if I were to walk out and there will rain, I would feel connected to all of you and feel that heart. I love that you chose the word community. I chose the word um, rebels, because uh, I thought that's journey if I haven't heard it. Um, but it's also what is the community. It reminds me that they needed each other and they couldn't do it alone. 
and it reminded me they were grieving the loss of one of their leaders, Miriam, and they had no water. And it makes me think, I wonder if they had no tears left even. Oh, um, oh. And I think oh. they they needed one another to get through that, even if they had to be rebels, even if they were angry, um, even if they were upset that they needed one another. <clears throat> and so thank you for sharing that. Anyone else want to share? Yeah. Well, I chose God's presence because, um, well, this one, this drop is purple because it's about fear. Because in God's presence, you sometimes feel fear. And then the red one is just different emotions and love. Because, and then the plant is like a, a, it's a growing plant and it looks like it is, and it looks like it's holding the sun. Um, because uh, God is always holding us up, just like this plant looks like it is holding up the sun. And uh, mm-hmm. this one is drought. All the other different colors produce different emotions. Red, orange, yellow produces anger and fear, and then I like, fear that I'll never get it. Amen. And then, um, purple, blue, and green are like sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and more fear. And then when I get it, it's just like a mix of different love emotions. So that's why I put water on it and then it's just dripping down. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Little show there. Vaseline. I'm showing my West Texas roots now. I actually had a teacher bring um, like a fake steer and a lasso one day to play after school. My, that's my West Texas story for today. So. <laughs> Doesn't relate to what we're talking about. <laughs> Well, that was a lead-in for me because I'm an analytical guy, and the word I picked out was cattle. Oh, oh. And uh, it was really, I, I'd heard that story before, but I was like, where did the cattle come from? I always thought of Israelites with sheep and not cattle. And, and then I thought, I watched Western movies as a kid, and the cattle people always hated the sheep people because the sheep could eat grass down to the nub. Whereas the cattle can only, they gotta have some lush grass to eat cattle. So I was like, that's pretty neat that these Israelites, I thought they went with nothing. So they brought some Egyptian cattle with them. So it's just like, so that was kind of this lushness of they're settling down as opposed to sheep people. So, huh. so that's just my picture of cattle. Thank Since you said spears. And it reminds us that even they got water too, yeah. which is cool. Even the, the cattle were, were saved in the story. Yeah. Vicki. Well, I chose community too, but I'm not as elaborate as Mary was. <laughs> so um, I drew circles intertwined, and then I thought, oh, it's more than that. So I let it all bleed into each other because we kind of lift each other up. We, we're part of each other. So we're not just connected, we're, we're attached. How that's different. I love that. Thank you. I'm Okay. Hey, so I did um, kind of like abstract stuff. Um, so I did different blends of like brown just for like dry and there's a little bit of yellow in there for like the sun and uh, and I guess that's just kind of the drought and then a little bit of blue because um, 
I think in any in any drought or any hard time, like you have to keep that hope, and in this case, the hope is for water. Yes. Um, so there is a little bit of blue in there because it can't all just be, you know, you have to allow yourself to uh, realize that like this isn't forever. Absolutely. And then uh, and then whenever the rain comes or whenever you know anything you're going through comes to an end. Um, so I did a lot of blue, and then uh, there's purple, and there's red. Uh, because, I mean, the red is for love. I mean, you feel a shower with everything you've kind of been hoping for. And, and I did rain drops. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? I looked at Natalie because I know she's, she likes to share. <laughs> Art's not my thing. <laughs> but you did it today. I did it, because I'm a good obedient. <laughs> 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 um, the words that really hit me were embarrassing, but they were attacked, through, and slammed. I couldn't just choose one, because it's like every one of them just hit out at me as yeah. it was being read. And what was fun was, uh, messing with the colors, which I ordinarily don't do that, but um, I thought I had black at the end that I was reaching into, but it was actually brown, <laughs> and it turned out gold, and so it was kind of cool the way the three words came together and attacked. I, I was pleased with the way the watercolor just uh, just kind of messed over it and made it not such a harsh word, but it really was kind of like that orangey grass, you know how it gets when your grass is dying mm -hmm. and everything's just kind of orange. And, um, and then through, I was doing what I thought was uh, blue and it was purple. <laughs> <laughs> As I played with it, uh, you know, it actually, uh, I could kind of make it throw. It kind of went past just the word throw into, you know, like distance. It was flowing, and that was kind of comforting that maybe I could throw away, really throw away the angst that sometimes I feel like it's I'm glued, you know, that's gluing me down. And slammed was a red that actually was red. <laughs> and anyway, that was just was fun to put color on those words. And the other ones, I just was trying to draw, uh, you know, the dry, arid uh, look on top, and then all the. It was fun to just splatter a blue, and it turned out to be kind of like water on a pond or water on a lake, and then surround it with green instead of anything that's yellowish or dark. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Jacob, would you read yeah. Margaret's comment? Yes. Uh, Margaret said, please tell Natalie that those words jumped out at me too. Oh, amen. Yeah. It's, inter it's a violent story. And yeah, it's, I mean, it makes sense. If I'm hot, if I'm hungry, I'm, I'm angry. And I think they were just exhausted and so terrified and scared and over it. And um, that was cool. Anyone else, any other final thoughts? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't have any super profound, but it was just one of those interesting things. So I, community and congregation stood out to me. And so I kind of drew these centric <laughs> circles. And then it's still drying, but I happen to like peek over at my neighbor's work, and my husband is drawing concentric circles with the word community <laughs> written at the bottom. Right? And so it's like, we're, we're sort of on the same brain, yes. like brain wavelength here with community and congregation and sort of this idea of surrounding and enveloping. And just, I thought it was really cool. It's like we both drew this kind of same mm -hmm. art. Yeah, there was a lot of circles. That's, isn't that interesting? We, we drew a lot of circles. You can see circles on like half of the pages, I think. So thank you all for doing this. I was like, I don't know if this will go over well. Um, <laughs> but I think it did. I think it was beautiful. Yes. Natalie has a cool story that uh, she wants to share about this 
blessing, which is actually a breathing, which uh, we'll do together. Um, I just happened to wake up this morning uh, and just knew that it was I needed to get up and go write and uh, write the prayer that came. And this is what came. Awake to hear your guidance. We are here for a divine appointment to be reminded to let you live fully in us as we breathe in, breathe out. Every breath says you want us here, alive and present. Your love created us in your image. Every day we live, you are in us loving and reaching out through our actions to show others who you are and how you love them. We're breathing in your love, breathing out grace, forgiveness, kindness, serenity. We make this world a better place in each encounter we have with you and then with others. We are your beloved creation on earth. Breathe in God's love. Let breath flow out naturally, taking compassion, creativity, deeper sanity from our functioning lungs into the air where we live while we live. Breathe for while God transforms each of us into her image and his, we're drawing nearer, blossoming, becoming who we were created to be, beloved children of God's family tree. Breathe. No one who has lived is more important today than you or me. Breathing in and breathing out, remembering how loved we are, passing it on one breath at a time. Amen. Amen. Amen.